two-time World Series winning twin shortstop Greg Gagne, who helped Minnesota take down a pair of championships in 1987 and 91, including the game and title-clinching RBI in Game 7 of the 87 Fall Classic. Greg, how are you today? Pretty good, thanks. Good. You know, in your day-to-day -day life, how often do memories of the World Series you played in come to mind? They can just pop in every once in a while. I was fortunate this year to go down to um, uh, Fort Myers and they, they did a Twins fantasy camp. That was the first year I did it. And uh, so it was a lot of good memories of uh, 87 and 90 and 1 when I was down there. And uh, just seeing the guys um, down there was just so, oh, I had so much fun. Mm -hmm. What? Well I mean, beyond going to like a fantasy camp and that kind of thing, just in day to day yeah. life. I mean, does anything ever spark those memories, or is that something that's kind of you don't think about it unless you're around baseball? Um, maybe some people will bring it up to me. Um, mm -hmm. Some people at church I go to, they'll they'll bring up. Oh, I remember I was here or there. Uh, I was in the uh, military, and I uh, saw you. So um, just kind of uh, you never know. In the course of a day, somebody mm -hmm. might meet and run into, and they might uh, um, talk about the time that I was playing, mm -hmm. the time that they saw uh, uh, saw me on TV or were at, was at the game or, or whatever. So um, any day, <laughs> I guess any day, um, you know, it could be, bring back uh, good memories of uh, 87 and 91. All right. Uh, you know, Tom Kelly took over the reins for Minnesota toward the end of the 1986 season and then managed through 2001. It's been Ron Gardenhire at the helm since. As someone who played for TK and was coached by Gardy, how important is it to an organization's culture to have that type of consistent leadership for such a long period of time? Uh, well, I think it's really good. Um, and I say that because I, I, I used to work the Kansas City Royals, and uh, when I was there, they, they had two different coaches. And then through the years uh, after I left there, they might have had six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. you know, different coaches. And uh, you could see the lack of uh, success, uh, maybe belief in the system. I think when you're able to uh, do what the Twins have done, um, you kind of bring in, like, like they say, the Twins way, mm -hmm. um, you know, or Tom Kelly's way, uh, Ron Godenheye's way, but more or less it's just the Twins way. And uh, that's the mentality, and um, I think that's why they've, they've had success. They've been able to, from the top down, um, to keep that um, uh, kind of selfless, selflessness <laughs> and just thinking about the team and stuff like that and, and, and to build, uh, build a good foundation for um, uh, success and uh, in how to run an organization, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you brought it up going to Kansas City, and then, of course, you played for a while with the Dodgers. Having experienced how some of these other clubs go about their business, maybe not so much uh, about changing managers uh, routinely and that kind of thing, but maybe more about uh, just the way they approach the game on the field. What are your thoughts now on what Twins baseball really represents as opposed to some of the other teams you played for? Um, I don't know. I, I just kind of look at it. each each uh, each organization uh, in baseball. I think uh, uh, team they have different different people, different management, different styles. Um, and it's funny you ask because I've been I've been reading a book by uh, Tony Dungy, who was a uh, uh, in Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, and coached for Tampa Bay, and was coached under. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and Chuck Noll and, and you know they went to four Super Bowls and mm -hmm. um, and how he was saying about the you, you try to develop from the top down and everybody's got to kind of get that mission um, on what they are trying to accomplish throughout the course of the year. Everybody knows you want to try to win a World Series, mm -hmm. but uh, just the day to day when you're playing like 160 games in a row. Um, What's the feeling in, in between those those times, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what I what I saw was, was people, you know, really encouraging each other and building each other up. I think that's very important, and to be kind of like a family, a unity, mm -hmm. uh, which I think the uh, organizations that can do that, they could do it for a long time. 
You know, with the exception of a few seasons from Christian Guzman, the Twins really haven't ably been able to replace you at shortstop after you left for Kansas City after the 92 season. Now they have Pedro Florimon manning the position. What are your impressions of the switch hitting shortstop to this point? Have you seen him play very much? Do you think he's the answer long term at shortstop for the Twins? Uh, I haven't really um, seen him play too much. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I hope it is. I hope the kid has a, a, a you know a successful career that he can play 10, 15 years at <laughs> short there. Um, you know, all I know is that it takes a lot of hard work. You know, day to day, you got to stay healthy. I mean, I was fortunate to be healthy all my time in Minnesota. Uh, was able to, uh, you know, just work hard every day. And I think the biggest thing was just just staying healthy and having some success and building on that success. And uh, you know, I think that uh, that's part of the way of doing it. And, and I, you know, I just hope that he, he can. Um, uh, play that long. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. How important do you think it is it for a shortstop to hit? I mean, how much emphasis do you think should be on a shortstop producing offensively? Well, I think it's, in this culture today, or, or how baseball is today, it's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, I know back before I played in the, in the 60s or 70s, and um, you know, when Mark Belanger was playing, you know, he didn't hit. He didn't care what he hit. Mm-hmm. And that was it, you know. And same with catches. Mm-hmm. That was the mindset back then. The catches, you just catch, you, you know, whatever you hit, we don't really care. You know, we got, you know, guys that are going to pound the ball and hit the ball hard and score runs. That's their job. Your job is to feel the ball and take care of the pitches and and shortstop just to make the plays. Mm-hmm. But now I think it's I think it's important that uh, that guys do uh, do hit. But also it goes back to. Um, Whatever the management is, or, or the manager, you know, what are they looking for? What is their, um, oh, for baseball, what do you call it? You know, I mean, do they do they want their shortstop? I think everybody wants everybody on the team to hit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is important, but I think sometimes if depending on the coach, the management, hey, if this guy can pick it with anybody, I don't care. I want him. I don't care if he hits. Mm-hmm. I I want them. So it's kind of like the makeup and the uh, the feeling of the of the manager and the uh, the manager and the team who's running it. You know. Mm-hmm. But my personal opinion, I think yeah, you got to you got to hit nowadays. You got to hit and field. Okay. You know, you did something that uh, just every time I think about it, it's just incomprehensible to me. You had two inside the park home runs in a single game against the White Sox at the Metrodome in 1986. And, of course, you added a triple for good measure in the same game, 90 feet shy of a hat trick. What are your recollections of that game and getting a pair of inside-the-park home runs in one day? Well, I think I was kind of lucky. I mean, <laughs> the first ball was probably the legit home run inside the park. I mean, I, I believe I hit it on a line drive, and Darryl Boston came in, and at that time the dome was like, you know, playing on a ping-pong table. The ball right. was- Bounced like crazy, so he came running in and it hit in front of him, and it jumped over his, you know, went over his head, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's probably legit because he, he comes running in not knowing the field, uh, not playing there a lot, he, you know, the the field just beat him there. Mm-hmm. And then the next time, the next two, three times, I believe I hit the ball, maybe four times, I think it was three though. I hit it like in the exact same spot, right center. One time. <laughs> They lost it in the um, um, the ceiling. They mm-hmm. lost it. The ball bounced, and it ended up going to the left uh, in center field. And then the next one, they they almost collided. And then the <laughs> next, that was a triple. And then the next one, they almost uh, collided again. And they finally caught the ball. So it was just one of those days where uh, I don't know. He couldn't see the ball, and I hit the ball where. Uh, they had trouble seeing it. You know, when you were going that last at bat there, when you were going in for the triple, I mean, we're going between second and third. Did it actually cross your mind? It's like, oh, my God, I might be doing this again. I don't, I really don't even know what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> you know, I was like, I remember some people that said, why would you even stop at third? You should have just kept going anyways, right? And, uh, you know, you look back and you say, yeah, you're right. Maybe I should have just tried and been safe and hit three, and three home runs. Uh, inside the park home runs in a game, and that's that's one of the records. I know they, I kind of play um, um, play it back when they when they talk about um, you know records that will never be broken. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I, and I say that record would never be broken, you know. Yeah, I mean the only way. I, you know, I just play around. I say I, I don't know if anybody can break that record. They might tie it, <laughs> but they're three inside the park home runs in one game. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even think someone could do that on a video game, honestly. So you know, so yeah. it's one of those funky uh, <laughs> records, you know. But you never know. It, it may be someday. Yeah, no, that's the beauty of baseball. You never do know. You know, now that it's gone. What's your greatest Metrodome memory? And beyond the World Series championships, and of course those inside the park home runs, what really stands out to you? Maybe a funny story, anything. Just what do you remember most about the Metrodome? The nice, the not including the playoffs of the World Series. Yeah, just kind of beyond that, just something that's more a little more personal to you. Well, you know, I think the biggest thing was when in '91 when I hit the three-run home in Game One when I had a lot of family there watching. My father was there and. Uh, it was just an emotional time. It was just, it was just, it was just, it was just awesome. Um, I mean, other than that, you know, because it's not, it's no longer there, right? Right. They slant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know it's, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad, like you're saying. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you kind of have a whole lot of memories there, and then that building's no longer there anymore. Right. But you're saying, wow, okay. Um, but there were a, a great lot of memories there, and. Uh, you know, I mean, that was my livelihood there for a number of years, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, just good memories, uh, uh, funny memories. I'll tell you one memory that I, I, I kind of never forget. <laughs> we were playing in the playoffs or something. I, I think it was during the playoffs, and uh, I'm catching alongside with Dan Gladden. Mm -hmm. Dan's on the side of me, and he's playing catch with Randy Bush. And, and he just turns to me and he goes, he goes, it was funny, but it wasn't funny. I go, he goes, he goes, gags. He goes, are my teeth all right? And I go, what the heck happened? He, the ball had hit him, and his whole bottom, the bridge of his mouth, uh -huh. pushed straight back. Oh, man. <laughs> it was pushed straight back. So I says, so after he says, Hey, Gags, am I all right? I go, no, you're not all right. You better go see Dick. <laughs> Dick Martin was our trainer. And um, and he went and got it fixed up. But I'll never forget that. That was one of those things where, you know, you don't see that every day. But, no, you uh, don't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, those are just some of the things. You know, it's just a memory that uh, I, 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 I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. So what keeps you busy these days? Well, this weather's been kind of tough this year, this spring. Mm -hmm. I know you guys had a tough, uh, tough winter, right? Oh yeah. Cold and yeah, that's what we're getting. And um, so it's been kind of like a long winter um, to keep me busy. Well, of late, I've been trying to get outside. I like trying to take care, taking care of the lawn, throwing down that <laughs> uh, that weed stuff and. Weed and kill, feed and kill, and all that stuff. Just take care of the lawn, doing some yard work, mm -hmm. playing some golf, uh, trying to get out, play some golf is, uh, when the weather's nice. That's But the weather hasn't been too nice. Usually what I go, it's windy and rainy. Yeah. So it hasn't been too far. I can't wait till this uh, weather breaks a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I just started coaching a little bit with the Little League kids, helping out a friend of mine uh, in Swansea, which is a nearby town. Mm-hmm. Uh, coaching probably once or twice a week. Uh, getting involved in my church back here. Uh, we do a men's group once a week where we, we do a little study. and, and uh, So that's good. Going to church and um, what else? Hopefully I can get up to my land and stop my farm work again this year. Mm. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can get up to the farm. Yeah. Um, because it's been wet, but I like to get up there and maybe have a little bit of a, a garden up there. And mm -hmm. uh, I plan on maybe, uh, well, I do plan on this year probably 10 acres of land mm. get it plowed up, and I want to put some uh, hay in there. And uh, and then that way I can maybe just sell some of the hay to whoever needs it up here. And mm -hmm. at that time, keep, keep the... Uh, <laughs> Keep from just cutting down weeds every time, you know. Yeah. So try to make a little money doing that. Go hang out with the deer and the uh, antelope up there. <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's about. I tend to take care of my kids and mm -hmm. enjoy my family, my 
my wife and kids. And just one day at a time. Sometimes one moment at a time. <laughs> Enjoying the gift of life. Yeah, I hear you. You know? All right, Craig. Hey, it's been a lot of fun talking with you today. We really take, appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk with us. All right. You got it. All right. Take care. You got it.